Tiana and welcome back to my channel. So you know how in every video I always tell you how excited I am to show you my latest doll? Well I always am, but today I'm like really excited. Like really 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 excited. Why you ask? Well, today's doll has been in the works for a while, and I am collaborating with the insanely talented doll artist, Kiyotz. I've been a fan of hers for a while, and I reached out to her a while back ago and asked if she'd be interested in doing a collaboration with me. And I ended up running around my studio in excitement when she said yes. <gasps> she said yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. After I was done fangirling, we started talking concepts, and it turns out that we both had plans to make mushroom dolls at some point, so it seemed like it was the perfect project for us to collaborate on. Please be sure to check out her video right after you finish mine. So I started working on concepts right away for our doll, and this is the basic story that I came up with. So the story centers around a girl who's originally from the big city. She goes out one summer to visit her grandma for the first time who lives out in the country. And grandma warns her to be careful in the woods because of the fairies that live there. But of course our girl was like, I'm pretty sure grandma's just being grandma and fairies don't exist. Big mistake. Huge. So of course one day she decides to go for a walk through the forest and ends up stuffing on a bunch of mushrooms. Sacred mushrooms. This, of course, makes the fairies very angry, and they end up cursing her to become a very tiny mushroom girl. Oh no! Don't worry, she breaks the curse eventually, and she ends up learning an important lesson. Don't make fairies angry. A. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover for this doll, so enough talking, let's get started. For today's repaint, I'm going to be using a Rochelle Goyle doll. I'm going to be using a lot of black and gray tones for this doll, so starting with a gray base for her skin will let me skip right to using pastels instead of having to paint on a different skin tone. After giving her head a soak in hot water, I gently removed her head, and now I'm going to remove the old hair plugs from her scalp. She'll be getting a mushroom headpiece, so removing all of the hair will give me a nice smooth surface to sculpt on. After removing all of the plugs, you can see that there were some pretty large holes left from her bangs. If I were giving her new hair using yarn webs or synthetic doll hair, I would probably be trying to figure out how to fill these, but fortunately for me, the mushroom headpiece will cover this up. I don't need her gargoyle ears, and again, I don't have to worry about what to do with the large holes left behind, though I do feel pretty barbaric just clipping her ears off like this. One of the things I like the most about Rochelle are her expressive eyebrows. To me, Rochelle's face paint makes her doll one of the most compelling dolls in the Monster High collection. I want to give my Mushroom Beauty her own face, so I'm removing her factory face paint using pure acetone. My goal for my face up is to create the same level of intensity of emotion through her facial expressions. Her face is now a blank canvas, and the last part of her prep is to spray the head and the body with three coats of Mr. Super Clear sealant. This will give the plastic a textured surface, which will give me a papery surface to draw on. So the order that I do her transformation is really important, and I think it would be smartest to start with her face up. Our mushroom skin tone is gray, but when painting skin, we don't want it to be one flat color. Skin tones are multidimensional and are influenced by the coloring under the skin, the amount of melanin present in the skin cells, and by light and shadow. Right now, I'm working on applying the color zones that affect the coloring underneath the skin. This is known as the subdermal color zones, and I introduced this process in my Medusa video. So if you want to know more information about the SCZs, be sure to check out that video. But 
please do so after watching this video. <laughs> I chose blue soft pastels for the first zone because I think it will play well with her gray skin. In that it will give some depth to where I apply it, but also look like it naturally pairs with her skin. Next, I'm working on the red zone of her face. I'm going with this mauve color because I saw a lot of gray mushrooms with hints of it in reference photos, and I think it will give her enough warmth without overpowering her skin. For the yellow layer, I'm using a light yellow. With the gray skin tones, I wasn't sure if yellow would work, so I'm adding it lightly, just enough to show that there is a change in color in areas like her forehead and cheekbones. These are the areas of the face where bone sits closest to the skin, and it's least affected by the coloring of muscle and blood vessels. And speaking of blood vessels, I experimented with my Medusa Remake doll by giving her some light blood vessels on her face up, and I really liked it, so I'm going to do the same thing for her. For her blood vessels, I'm going to match the blue that I used earlier and lightly draw them on. Everything we've set up so far should show through the skin and look like a natural part of her. But right now, there isn't anything subtle about the color, it's just sitting on top of the base layer of gray. So we need to bring the gray skin back by using the soft bristled brush and light gray soft pastels. It looks dusty right now, but after I spray it with Mr. Super Clear, the layer of pastels will blend in and the first layers of color will look like they're sitting underneath the gray skin. Jumping forward, I want to give her actual skin some texture, so I'm spritzing her with a couple different colors of watered down acrylics. I always do this for my dolls because it makes them feel more real to me. For her specific skin tones, I'm going with blue and pink freckles to complement the colors we just gave her. Now that we've made the plastic of the doll look like real skin, it's time to play with the highlights and shadows of the face. There are some basic areas of the face that get the most shading. And if you use makeup, you're probably familiar with these areas when you contour your foundation. Contouring emphasizes the planes of your face, and that's what we want to do to add depth to her facial features. While I contour her face, I'm starting to think about what I need to do in order to capture the emotion that I want. Our mushroom girl is distressed and sorrowful about being turned from a human into a mushroom, so I want her to emote that. I'm painting the inside of her mouth to have it look open because it feels like a more vulnerable expression to me. Going back to soft pastels, I'm working in some dark grays into the brow line. I want her to have furrowed eyebrows like she's really worked up, and when someone knits their brows together, it moves the skin of the face and causes some very deep shadows. At this point, I also want to block in the shape of her eyebrows. I'm making them turn up at the ends to match that scrunching, unhappy expression. Eyebrows in this position make someone look uneasy or uncertain, which is exactly what she's feeling in this whirlwind of emotion. I took a step back to take a look at our doll so far, and I think that now that the eyebrows are fully in, I need to darken those shadows around them a little bit more to really push for that emotion we're going for. And now to balance out the shadows that we added, I'm adding in some highlights. This will emphasize the raised part of her brows that are being pushed together and give it a 3D appearance.
I'm working in some dark gray pastels to the sides of the whites of the eyes so that it looks like there are some shadows cast on them. This will make the eyes appear spherical. And to make the eyes look spherical under the upper eyelashes, I'm using my pencil to darken in the creases of the eyelids. This will make it look like the ball of the eye is sitting right under them in the sockets. And even though she's a mushroom now, she still gets to have some nice long eyelashes. For the lips, I'm going for a subtle look. I'm using a base of red and using blues to create the lines of the lips and for shading. Her face has a lot of blue in it, and I want to keep using it for the mouth details so it looks cohesive with the rest of the face up. I want her to look like she's been crying, and after looking at some reference photos of people crying, I realized that I needed to push the reds of her cheeks and around the eyes more. When people cry, they usually get flushed in the cheeks and their eyes and eyelids get irritated and red. Now to start putting in the details of her eyes. It may be a little hard to see right now, but I'm giving her slate gray irises using acrylic paint. Adding dark gray around the irises is starting to help my doll look less spooky. And I'm going to keep adding details to the irises to give them that kind of marbled look that real eyes have. To the bottoms of the eyes, I'm dotting on some white paint. I'm going to have her crying, and I'm hoping that adding the white dots here will make it look like there's light reflecting on tears that are welling up in her eyes. Now I'm adding some larger catch lights to the eyes to make them look like they're sparkly with tears. As always, I'm adding some Sculpey gloss to her lips and eyes to make them look all shiny. In addition, I'm also going to add some gloss to her face, around the bags under her eyes to make her face look wet from crying, and I'm using it to draw on the trails of tears that will be running down her face. To make her tears, I'm adding some beads of hot glue and trying to pull it just right so that it looks like the tears are coming from her eyes. I've added the main part of the tears to the bottoms of the cheeks so that it looks like they rolled down them. Like I said earlier, to turn her into her mushroom form, I'm going to be sculpting a mushroom headpiece, which will basically be like a large mushroom hat. Today, I'll be making the headpiece out of foam clay. The clay that I have is white, but it's really easy to dye the clay into any color you want just using some acrylic paint. All you have to do is squirt on some paint and knead it until the paint has fully absorbed into it. And I love when things are this easy. Also, working with this clay is so soothing. Just listen. Anyway, her headpiece is going to be made of a couple different parts, and I'm using this gray color to make the bottom side of the mushroom. I have this lid sitting around, and it's the perfect size for the brim of the mushroom hat. So I'm going to evenly smush the clay into the circle and let it firm up before I move on. The clay has firmed up, but it's still squishy, and I've rolled out some of the clay into a sheet, and I'm going to start cutting strips out of it. 
One of the things I really love about mushrooms are the gills that are on the bottom side of a lot of mushrooms. I think this rib texture is really lovely and it was one of the first things I knew I wanted to incorporate into my doll. I want the lines to look uniform, but not too much, otherwise it might not look like an organic real mushroom. So to keep myself from going crazy and adding the strips all over the place, I marked where I want the crown of the hat to be, and I'm lining up the strips to go around that circle. Jumping forward, I've added all the strips and I've let the clay firm up. I want to add the same colors that I added to her skin to this part of the mushroom because I want the mushroom to look like it's growing out of her body. And this keeps the headpiece from feeling like it's disjointed from her face. Before adding the pastels, I gave it a couple layers of Mr. Super Clear just to make sure the pastels would adhere to the clay. And once I'm done, I'll use it again to seal in the colors. Next, I want to shape the brim of the mushroom to her head while the clay is still somewhat soft. Obviously, I want to shape it so that it looks like a mushroom, but I also want to make sure I'm covering up the hairlines and those holes from her bangs. The clay is still a little too soft, so it's starting to slip and her head is pushing through it. So before I can do anything else, I'm going to try to keep the shape that I made and let it dry out some more. It's the next day and the clay has kept its shape and we're ready to start on the second phase of the hat. Using this ball of clay, I'm going to shape the crown of the hat into a rounded cylinder shape. I want to make sure that the crown of the hat is tall enough so that you can see it from behind the underside of the hat so we don't lose the mushroom shape of it. And here's the hat after it's completely dried. Now I'm going to tell you what type of mushroom we're basing our doll off of. While working on my concept for our doll, I fell in love with this slimy mushroom. It's commonly called an ink cap mushroom, and there was just something about the dripping black ink-like slime that warmed my heart. I think that it almost looks like it's sad too, like those are tears coming down, so I'm incorporating that into her headpiece. After cleaning up the top of the brim, I'm going to cover it using some black clay that I mixed. The black will transition to white at the top of the hat, so I don't want to cover up the white completely. Next, I'm taking pieces of clay and adding dribbles of slime to the edge of the brim and positioning them so that it looks like they're oozing down off the mushroom cap. The drips look pretty good, but the slime of the actual mushroom looks shiny and I want that for our mushroom too. Which brings me to the next phase of our hat, the slime experimentation phase. Out of all my supplies, I have two options to use to make the clay look slimy, but I don't know which, if any, are going to work best. The first thing I'm going to test is the Sculpey Gloss that I used on her face up. I'll be giving this test clay a couple of coats of it and let it dry to see how it looks. The other option to test is this gel top coat. I use this for my giant snail doll, and it's going to involve applying a generous amount to the test clay and then curing it in my UV light. And it's been about 24 hours, and here's the first test using the Sculpey Gloss. I'm not sure if the camera is catching it well, but after it dried, there are a bunch of cracks going through the gloss, so it's not an ideal look. In fact, if I just move the clay around, the layer of gloss just crumbles. Next, we have a clear winner with the gel top coat. The dried gel has a beautiful shine to it. I don't see any streaks or cracks. 
So now that I have a winning slime, I'm applying it all around the edge of the hat brim and I'll coat the drips completely. And once I've finished, I'll pop it into the UV light to cure the gel. Okay, so now it's done curing in the UV light, but the top coat still is a little sticky from the gel. I'm sure a regular slimy mushroom would be sticky, but I don't want my doll to be because gross. So I'm rubbing the glossy parts down with some rubbing alcohol pads until it's sticky free. Now to add some extra shroomy texture. I'm using some gray paint to add lines to the black parts of the cap, just to make it look more realistic. Now we're going to start working on the upper part of the hat, and I want it to look like the black is transitioning up into the white, so I'm applying some black clay blobs to the white section. It kind of looks a little bit like cow print, but I'll be fixing that in just a moment. So if you look at the Inky Cap Mushroom, you'll see that it has this kind of feathery or scaly looking texture towards the top of the cap. It's also a little bumpy and clumpy looking, so I'm going to be trying to get that look by applying some extra white clay. I'm kind of smearing and pulling it, trying to get that light and feathery look across the black, but I really want to add some bumpy texture to the top to make the whole thing more interesting. Her head has been properly transformed into a mushroom, so now we're going to repaint her body before we sculpt her mushroom outfit. For the body's repaint, we'll be using the same color palette we used for the face up, starting with the subderminal colors. Then we'll be rocking the same texturizing for the skin and contouring and highlighting certain areas to make the body look more 3D. We still have a lot to cover for our mushroom doll, so we're going to breeze through this part. And really, most of her body will be covered up by the end. Next up, we're going to be making her an outfit. And I'm going to be using my new best friend, foam clay, again, to sculpt a strapless dress that's influenced by a couple different types of mushrooms. I'm starting with the bodice of the dress, and for this part of the dress, I'm going to make gray oyster mushrooms. I'm playing a little game I like to call, I have no idea what I'm doing for this part of the construction, but here's what I'm thinking. I know that I'm probably going to have to try to sculpt these mushrooms a couple of times to make sure I size them and sculpt them right, which means I probably don't want to add the clay directly onto the doll's skin because I don't want it to stick there. So to help me not fluff everything up, I'm wrapping her torso in some painter's tape so I can make a little pattern that I'll apply the clay directly to. To make the mushrooms, I'm trying to replicate the stacked look of oyster mushrooms. I love how they grow together, so I want each piece to stand out, but blend to become one unified piece. If I were a wiser human being, I would insert some kind of beautiful metaphor about that here. I'm wrapping the piece so that the two little tabs meet in the back, and I'm going to set it aside so it can harden and be the best mushrooms they can be. On to part two of the dress, and I've made a little woven sheet of painter's tape, and I'm tracing the basic shape of a skirt onto it. Now I'm going to peel it up, cut it out, and repeat the process so we have a full-size skirt that I can use to build the clay on. I want the hat and the skirt of the dress to look like they belong together, so for this part, we are going full-on slime. In my mind, the skirt's going to be made of globs of the same shiny slime that's sliding off of her hat. It doesn't sound too appealing, but in my mind, it's pretty lit. <laughs> Before I start the sculpt, I'm cutting a slit up the side of the skirt so we can see her leg. The slime is going to be pretty heavy looking, and this will break up the look as an area of interest. Alright, I'm adding the first layer of clay. This is primarily going to be covering the tape and give the other layers something to cling onto. 
I'm going to have to work in sections so that parts can harden so I don't squish my slime as I keep working. Here, I'm starting to build up individual streaks of the slime. I'm going to keep adding them one by one until this front piece is covered, and it looks almost like a wall of slime that's slowly oozing down. And then we're going to repeat this process until the whole skirt is covered. The oyster mushrooms are looking a little bare, and now that the slime has hardened, I think now is the perfect time to paint them. I'm going to paint the tops and lips of each of the little mushrooms a dark gray. The paint application looks a little rough on top of the hardened clay, but I'm hoping that once I finish adding some of that mushroom texture, it'll blend out and we'll all be happy. Which reminds me, I've been very rude and I haven't asked you how you're doing. How are you? Happy, I hope. I'm liking the texture so far, and I think it's a good combination of the whites, grays, and blacks that are found throughout her design. And I think it really makes our mushroom gal look like a real fun guy. Get it? Fun guy? Extreme dad jokes. On her forearms, I'm giving her some puff mushroom bell sleeves. And I'm adding in some creases around the cuffs to make them look like a mixture of fabric and mushroom. I'm stopping the sleeves right at the ball joints at the elbows so that there can still be some movement. The slime skirt is really stiff, so I don't want to miss out on having some mobility for her body. Now I'm doing a little bit of shading around the creases so that they're defined and stand out against the white. I'm going to set the pastels with Mr. Super Clear, and we're going to come back later to these because I still have a plan in the works for them. So, are y'all ready to make this skirt shiny? That's right, we're going to take more of that top coat gel and we're going to cover this sucker in it. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour it on, and we want to make sure that we're getting every nook and cranny of the skirt covered. Oh no, I should have checked beforehand, but I got too excited. The skirt doesn't fit completely in my UV light, so I'll have to cure it in sections as best I can. It's kind of a tight fit. And now we're going to clean it up with those rubbing alcohol pads I used before. Back to the bell sleeves and to the tops of them, I'm going to add some shiny red rhinestones to make them look like another favorite mushroom of mine, the bleeding tooth mushroom. I love just about anything that's creepy but eerily beautiful at the same time. <laughs> For her shoes, I'm going to be using this pair that belong to Gulia Yelps. They have dripping blood ankle straps, and I'm going to paint them black so they go from blood to ooze. Now we just have to put her head back on and slip on her shoes. You may think we're done with our repaint now, but I've got more plans for our mushroom friend. Mm -hmm. 
So guys, I've decided to name our doll Esther. And since Esther was cursed to be shrunken down into a mushroom form, I wanted to make something that would show her new tiny size. And to do that, I'm making a giant mushroom for her to stand next to. I'm going to make the giant mushroom out of polymer clay, and right now I'm shaping a tinfoil armature for the mushroom cap. I'm building the base of the mushroom out of polymer clay because I know that after it bakes, it will be sturdy and will be able to stand on its own. Right now, I'm using some old scraps of clay from my giant snail project because at this point, I'm just trying to cover up the foil and I'm not trying to make it pretty yet. Now I'm working on covering the top of the mushroom with more clay scraps, and once I've completely covered it, I'm going to pop it into the oven and let it bake. The mushroom cap is out of the oven, and I've dyed some foam clay this coral color. I'm using foam clay because I don't have a lot of polymer clay left, and I have to save it for the mushroom stem. Next, I'm going to be painting a red to orange gradient on the mushroom cap. I want it to go from the darkest red at the top and blend down to a yellow-orange towards the bottom. And can you guess what kind of mushroom I'm making yet? Hint, it goes perfectly with our fairy tale theme. Did you guess a toadstool mushroom? That's right, I had to give her the classic toadstool mushroom to hang out with. Now that the paint has dried, I'm snipping off little dots of foam clay to make the mushrooms iconic dots. I really have to smush them into the mushroom cap to keep them from falling off, but hopefully once it dries, they will be completely stuck on. Now we're going to be making the mushroom stem, and I'm starting again with a foil armature to give me the basic shape. To cover the foil, I'm rolling out some Sculpey clay into a sheet, and then I'll cover it like it's a blanket. Now I'm going to add some clay to the bottom of the stem to give the mushroom a base to sit on. This will let the mushroom stand up on its own once I put it all together. I really want to make sure that I've blended the two pieces together well because I don't want to risk it cracking or falling out after it's been baked. So the reason I wanted to use Sculpey on this part of the mushroom is because I wanted to add some lines to the stem. My foam clay doesn't really hold these kind of subtle lines. The foamy texture makes them fade, but polymer clay lets you carve out really intricate details like this. Next, I'm adding this little cape to the top of the stem. I don't know what the scientific term for this is, but I saw a lot of toadstool mushrooms with this little piece on them, and I thought it was really cute. So I'm just folding on a really thin sheet of clay to give my mushroom its own cape. And here's how it looks after I baked it in the oven. And it's time to start painting and decorating it. I'm giving the stem a base coat of a really light cream color. I think this will give it more of a naturalistic look instead of leaving it the stark white color of the clay. Next, I'm using a dark brown soft pastel color to define the texture and the creases of the cape. It also makes it look a little dirty, which is a good thing since mushrooms grow out of the ground. Since the cream is a light color, in the real world it would reflect some of the colors of the objects around it. So I'm going to add some hints of green for the grass that's nearby and touches of orange from the mushroom cap, just to give the whole thing an extra touch of richness. Now we're going to work on the base. I want this to look like a patch of soil that the mushroom is growing out of. I mixed up a dark brown color using acrylic paint, and I'm brushing it on so that it looks gritty. I'm also going to lightly brush it up the bottom of the stem so it looks like the mushroom grew out of the ground. 
everything has dried and has been sealed, so now we can put the mushroom together. I'm not using a fancy method to do this, I'm literally just going to keep applying some hot glue until they're securely stuck together. And the last thing I want to do is glue on some dried moss to the dirt. I bought this moss for my Empress Tarot doll's throne, and I think it's the last little touch this mushroom needed. And before we go to the final photos, I had this little Cheeto-shaped bit of foam clay that was going to go to waste, and I realized that this would make the perfect little caterpillar. Like, if Esther's story was turned into a Disney movie, this caterpillar would be her fun animal companion. You can see the reference I'm using for the caterpillar on my phone, and as I paint on its pattern, I was trying to think of names, and the name Copernicus popped into mind. And I thought it was so cute, just like him, so Copernicus it is. So here is our completed cursed mushroom girl, Esther. I have to say that I'm really proud of her face up. The expression I was able to capture is probably the strongest out of all my dolls so far. I really want to continue to push myself to create strong emotions and expressions for my future dolls. I think that sometimes when people think about dolls, they think of them as like perfect little beings without a care in the world. But I know that I'm not a perfect person, and I like to express the beauty in imperfections and in expressing your true feelings through my dolls. It was a lot of fun researching different mushrooms for this doll and trying to figure out how to put all the different elements together. I really wanted to design an outfit for her that would go with the cursed theme, but also look glamorous. Or as glamorous as you can get while trying to make something look like oozing slime. I'm really happy with how she turned out, and I loved challenging and pushing myself to make every detail as perfect as I possibly could make it. I could go on and on about how much fun I had making Esther, Copernicus, and their mushroom, but I really want to know what you think about them. Do you think her mushroom transformation was a success? It would really make my day if you would leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Please be sure to check out Kiat's part of our collaboration. She is so talented and I am just in awe of her doll. And if you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and Kiat's. All right, Esther, Copernicus, and I have to figure out how to break her curse, but I'll see you next time with another doll repaint video. Bye!